As crazy as this sounds, I mean, an easy way to think about it, though, is if you just planned out your day for today, hour, you know, hour by hour, whatever it is, and printed that out on a piece of paper, you are basically got your to-do list for the day. So it feels very similar. You can look at it, you can cross it off um, and all that stuff. But just that step of pausing and saying, when am I going to do this thing? Like, I'm going to do it and when just sort of changes things. Welcome. To Corporate Warrior, the podcast that brings you the best advice on how to improve your health, optimize performance, and maximize productivity with your host, Lawrence Neal. This podcast is brought to you by HitUni.com. HitUni.com are a provider of amazing online courses for high-intensity training qualifications. HitUni comes highly recommended by the best in the field, including Body by Science co-author Dr. Doug McGuff, Discover Strength CEO Luke Carlson, and trainer and founder of Bay.com, Drew Bay. It was founded by my friend, author, and longtime personal trainer, Simon Shawcross, who's also been a guest on the podcast. Simon has 15 years' experience training clients and is supervisor of a 15 15,000 high-intensity training workouts. Using knowledge from experts like Skylar Tanner, Dr. James Steele, Dr. Ellington Darden, Hit Uni is a goldmine for learning everything to do with high-intensity training. The courses are delivered online through the website where you can learn via a variety of multimedia materials at your own pace. There's online support and a discussion forum where you can share ideas and ask for help. To learn more about high-intensity training and improve my own results, I started their personal trainer course. The content is amazing, the courses are really easy to follow, and each section is organized into bite-sized chunks that give you a real sense of achievement after you complete each one. I should also mention there is a DIY course. So this is the course for you if you're not necessarily a personal trainer, but you want to learn more about high intensity training and how to implement it for maximum benefit in your own exercise regime. To get your exclusive Corporate Warrior 10% discount on any course you purchase, simply head on over to hituni.com, that's H-I-T-U-N-I.com, and enter the coupon code CW10, that's CW in the number 10. So again, Head on over to hituni.com, pick your course, and enter the coupon code CW10 for 10% discount. Thank you for your support. What's up, guys? I am Lawrence Snail, and welcome to another episode of Corporate Warrior. I hope you are having a lovely day. This is the podcast that teaches you how to optimize your health, exercise, business, and lifestyle. My former guests include people like Mark Sisson, Ben Greenfield, Rob Wolf, Dr. Sean Baker, Dr. Doug McGuff, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, Luke Carlson, Noah Kagan, Keith Norris, and many, many more. Our guest today is an entrepreneur who has won both an Inc. 500 Award for Fast Growth and a Best Place to Work Award for Employee Culture. Today, he is the CEO of LeadX, a company that offers free leadership training and professional development to everyone, everywhere, at any time. He is a New York Times bestselling author and host of the LeadX Leadership Podcast. My guest is Kevin Cruz. I came across Kevin a few couple of years ago, actually, and when I started listening to his podcast called Extreme Productivity, as many of you know, I'm a real productivity nerd, and his podcast really, really resonated with me as it's packed full of productivity and time management advice and principles. So this was a real kind of geek out session for me. Uh, me and Kevin just essentially go off on one with regard to all things time management and productivity. We talk about the most important task, goal setting, how to organize your intray and decision fatigue. We talk about getting things done, calendar overuse, social media, iCal versus Google Cal, and much, much more. This is awesome if you're really looking to, if you're someone who is into productivity and let's say you've tried a whole bunch of time management stuff. Some of it works, some of it doesn't, and some of it you're just, you can see the value, but you're just not quite sure how to actually leverage it and use it in the best way. I think you'll really enjoy this because we dig into some of those types of questions. For all the show notes and links for this episode and all episodes, please go to where you'll find my full list of podcasts, which is corporatewarrior.org. Don't forget to hang around at the end for your free gift from me. And now I give you productivity pioneer Kevin Cruz. Kevin, welcome to the show. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to it. No worries. So um, 
Prior to this interview, as I was discussing with you just now, I did a fair amount of research and I just want to point the listeners to another interview you did, which I thought was really good for more context, um, which was the YouTube interview you did on high intensity health, which I think is also a podcast too. Um, And I just think that's a good one for context because I'm going to ask you questions that came out of that for me. So I will have that in the show notes. Um, and I wanted to kick off talking about principles of productivity. Um, I think one of the most important principles that you talk about, certainly in my opinion, is uh, the MIT, you know, most sure. important task. Um, can you just give some context for listeners what that is and why it's so important? Yeah, absolutely. And um, a- again, just in the spirit of context, you know, I- I, when I talk about productivity, I-, I come at it from someone who was horrible at it many years ago. I mean, really, really bad at it. I had some mentors who got me better at it, and and I experienced some success in in business. And uh, after I had sold my last company, you know, I'm such a time junkie, uh, such a productivity junkie that you know, I wanted to write a book about it, not just. The handful of things I thought I knew or or learned, um, but like what 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 else could I learn? So that's when you know I went out and I interviewed you know over two hundred self made billionaires and entrepreneurs and and others, Mark Cuban, people like that, and <clears throat> and so I'm I feel like I'm just more like the messenger of this. And so when it comes to the most important task or MIT, you know this was one of the things that came up. The most often, um, it was uh, Tom Ziegler, Zig Ziegler's son, who you know told me he's like, you know, the 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 when you get into the office, the first thing you do before you check your email, before you return phone calls, before you do anything else is work on the one thing that's going to grow your business most, and that's you know assuming you're in business and you you want to grow it. Um, and, and I, I hear this over and over again, and I was doing, you know, for separately for my leadership podcast, I was interviewing a guy, Dan Pink, very well-known author, successful author. And I said, Dan, give us uh, something we could do today that's going to really make us better. I didn't cue it up as about time, productivity, anything. And Dan Pink said, first thing he does, he walks, he works from home, but he walks into his office in the morning and he writes down, I think there's some magic in writing it down, you know, this is my most important task for the day. And he said, just by thinking about it, having one, writing it down, it's been a game changer. And I think, to me, the first step is, yes, like to be mindful of your most important task, your one thing for the day. You know, what can I do today that would most get me towards my my big goal, my big, hairy, audacious goal, my BHAG? Um, but to me, the real power on the MIT comes when you schedule it, because now – Again, you've got the power of, you know, when should I be working on the most important task? And not everybody's not the same, but for most of us, you know, we are most energized, most cognitively fresh in the morning. And so to actually schedule your MIT in the morning as early in the day as possible before all the rest of life kicks in, you know, I think that's the key. So it's like knowing what your MIT is and then really locking it into your calendar as early as possible are really important. Yeah, I lo- I love that um that principle and I first found out about that type of strategy um from Tim Ferriss actually in the 4 hour work week when he talks about effectiveness over efficiency. Yeah. Um and he wrote a great blog post about this which I reread constantly and um, which is something like um productivity hacks for the neurotic and depressive or something um, <laughs> and it's exactly the same type of thing it's like you know sit down in the morning with tea write down your to-do list and then ask yourself a couple of questions to figure out what is going to get you closer to your goal what's having the biggest impact and then block out the first two to three hours to focus on that one thing um yeah. and you've reminded me actually to actually go into my calendar and set up a daily recurring reminder to block out that time because i for some reason stop doing that i still tend to do my my most important task first thing but i think you have to you have to um secure that time and schedule it ahead otherwise 
things can get in the way. Yeah, and I I don't know, Lawrence, if, like if you're gonna, if you're going to dive into this later or not. But of course, that that's like the other big thing is is you know I don't even think we should use to do lists. You know, I'm all about scheduling everything and calendaring everything. But um, even if we can just calendar that MIT, that's a big win. Yeah, yeah, that was actually the next thing I was going to ask you. Um, <laughs> the 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 your 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 uh, take on to do lists and the downsides. I'd love to for you to elaborate on that. Yeah, this is what got me in trouble with Richard Branson. We got like in this fight through the newspapers, and then uh, I, I I made him a bet, but uh, it didn't it didn't go through. Uh, so look, I used to be a big task list guy, and almost all of us have been trained. You know, when I was failing at time and productivity, I had gone through all the time and productivity courses, read Getting Things Done (GTD) you know a million times, and so when I was doing the research. Um, my research was open-ended qualitative. I would ask all these people, hey, Mark Cuban, what's your number one secret of productivity? Hey, Dustin Moskovitz, co-founder of Facebook, what's your number one secret of productivity? It's just wide open. I assumed people would talk about their task list. Oh, I prioritize. I look at it Sunday night. I circle my one thing, stuff like that. And I didn't really hear anybody bring up uh, the to-do list. So about halfway through my interviews, I started doing follow-up questions saying, well, what about your to-do list? And to my surprise, almost none of them, I think three out of 235 people had a to-do list. So as I started to do more research, I saw that, um, you know, there's one study, the to-do list, it's you know a little over 100 years old, supposedly comes from Ivy Lee, teaching executives to keep this list, you know, in their pocket, cross things off. And I found research from a couple of years ago showing that um, only 40% of what we put on our to-do list ever gets done at all. And it shows that most people, for, for most people, the to-do list is like it's the graveyard of important but not urgent. You know, we we go to the to-do list. There's just a new research in uh, Harvard Business Review looking at doctors and their patients that they had to call on. There's this tendency to do the easy ones, not the important ones, cross off the easy patients so the list gets smaller. And, uh, you know, everybody's different, but it, it, to-do list has a high failure rate. And then I found something called the Zygarnik effect, where things that we know we have to do that we don't have a plan for, well, our unconscious, we spin, that, we spin on that. So a lot of us get insomnia. A lot of us feel stress. Um, so I'm thinking, well, <laughs> you know, with all this stress and a 50-50 rate of getting things done, like, well, what are all these people doing if they're not using a to-do list? And it's basically they're just using a calendar. So, you know, with GTD, it's like you, you put for your calendars for your phone calls and your meetings, like your appointments and your to-do list is for your tasks. The highly, like extremely productive people I interviewed, they're saying, look, if you want to get something done, just put it on your calendar. And having that extra step of before I say yes to what you just asked me for, before I say yes to that next crazy idea, um, I'm going to think about – if it's a yes, when's the day, the time, and the duration for that item? And then you put it on your calendar. And then you just live from your calendar. And it's, and it like I get so much like hate mail and craziness. And it's not like I'm against lists. Again, I used to use one up until a few years ago. Um, I think that as a tool for getting things done, look, if we only have like a handful of things we need to get done, our brain is good enough. Like we can just remember, oh, I got to do five things this weekend mow the lawn, go grocery shopping, take my kid to a party, whatever it is. Five things, I got it. If it goes to like more than the seven plus or minus two, so 10 or more items, okay, a list is better than our brain. You know, we're going to write it down. We're not going to forget it. And we can look at it throughout the day. We can prioritize it. It's a big improvement over our, our brain. But at a certain point for extre people with extreme productivity where, you know, we're doing 20, 30 phone calls a day, 10, 20, 30 meetings in the same day, 200 emails in the same day, um, all of these things, a list becomes 50-50 <laughs> on whether we're going to get something done. And we're all human. So as the day goes on, our the glucose in our brain goes down, we start to make the wrong decisions. So if I do have, it's three o'clock, and I just finished something and I go to my to-do list. It's like, gosh, I'm tired and I'm bored and I'm stressed. I'm going to choose something easy or fun on my to-do list. But if I go to my calendar instead, I'm going to look at three o'clock. Whatever's at three o'clock is three o'clock. And 
as crazy as this sounds, I mean, an easy way to think about it, though, is if you just planned out your day for today, hour, you know, hour by hour, whatever it is, and printed that out on a piece of paper, you're basically got your to-do list for the day. So it feels very similar. You can look at it, you can cross it off um, and all that stuff. But just that step of pausing and saying, when am I going to do this thing? Like, I'm going to do it and when just sort of changes things. That's fascinating. Uh, and I completely agree. If, if I have a long to-do list, I get overwhelmed and stressed out and I just end up doing hardly anything. And you end up ticking off a, the, uh, the, the easy items, which makes the whole exercise completely arbitrary, basically. Right. Um, this, this is interesting. You talked about getting things done. You know, I've read GTD. I've had David Allen on the podcast. Yeah. Fascinating guy and um, great uh, kind of introduction to time management. Um, and I know that GTD is very much based on molding it to you, you know, making it sort of tailoring it to your own approach. However, I've not had a ton of success in the whole intray method. So I'm really keen to dig in on this uh, subject. Um, because what I tend to do at the moment is I do the whole intray thing. So I will, whenever I have a thought, an idea, someone sends me an article, anything, you know how it is. Um, sure. I will write it down on a, uh, a one page in Evernote, which I've called my intray. It's saved in my shortcuts. And then the plan is that I process that every two to three days. So I've got an hour block in my calendar. Does it ever get done? Maybe once a week, <laughs> right? It's just, it's just, and then You're being what, very honest right now, Lauren. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and obviously, because in effect, it is a, even though you're you're obviously you're going through an intrade differently than you are a to do list because you are you're doing what you talked about in terms of you've got like a flow chart you know do you right. defer delete action calendar right. um, but that being said if there's a ton of stuff on the intrade it still can be quite overwhelming so I just wonder how do you do you have a solution for that uh, how do you because surely like you've talked before about how you use a notepad to record thoughts I mean yeah. you have to process that at some point so talk to me about how you how you do those sorts of things yeah and again I don't, you know I don't have a perfect solution and again I think different people different circumstances you know what's worked for me is uh, a, a couple of things so for example, anything that comes in through email, again, a whole nother show probably, like email, it, I'm not perfect, perfect, but I try to do touch it once and, you know, inbox zero, meaning if I can't take care of it, if I can't delete it, defer or, or delegate it, which is forward it, um, do it in less than five minutes, then instead of just letting it sit in the inbox and then our inbox becomes a second to-do list, <laughs> instead, I will calendar it. I defer it, but I don't, so I... I, you know, drag it uh, or click on it in Google uh, Mail, click on it and schedule it as an event. So I, I process every, every meeting request, phone call, thing to review or whatever that comes through my email inbox immediately throughout the three times a day I check or process my email. Um, so that gets calendared, you know, in real time. And most of my stuff, like I don't answer a phone, for example, so I don't take phone calls. And so um, uh, most things get processed through the email inbox. Now, I, as of uh, for the last year or so, I do have an assistant. So an assistant will process um, uh, phone calls or, or, or other requests. But part of my solution, I think, is um, that I batch things. So today, you know, we're, we're doing this, this podcast recording. I'll do five other podcast interviews, um, today. You know, I've got one day a month. That's like my media day. Um, for my own podcast, there's two days a month where I do, um, about 16 interviews. So for example, if someone, uh, uh, calls or emails, and wants, you know, wants to interview me or, or whatever, I use a tool like a Calendly to just say, yeah, absolutely. Here's the link. And then it automatically slots, but I only have one day a month that I do, you know, do media. I do love my notebooks and I write things down in the notebooks, but um, usually those are notes and things that I don't need to come back to. I, now this is where you and I will, um, depart a little bit. I do try to review the calendar and my notebook at the end of every day, because again, I'm not using a to-do list. I'm just using the calendar. And so I kind of, at the end of the day, the final, as part of my email processing, it's like, all right, I've processed my email, seen if there's any other notes. I uh, We use Basecamp, so it's a message system. I go through all the 
the pings, the messages to see if there's anything there. And then I look at my notebook and then I'll, you know, I'll schedule things out far from perfect. But again, most of it I just find comes through email, a general slotted thing. Um, but I'm really regimented too, Lawrence. Like I don't like I, I choose how to spend most of my time. I don't have a lot of slack. Like I have time blocks for, for almost everything. That's interesting. And just to underscore, I think so long as you get the MIT done, all of this stuff we're talking about doesn't really matter, which is, I think, it's the true. great thing about it, you know? That's right. It's so it's so satisfying and so uh, empowering to know that if you can spend the first two to three hours of your day doing something high impact, that you're going to be more productive than 90% of people. Um, that's right. But no, that's interesting hearing you say that because I'm thinking I probably need to get better at saying no. I think that's my problem because I will write down – I mean – Similar to you, I have so many. I think anyone who's quite entrepreneurial or um, ambitious has high uh, thought turnover. So I'm yeah, constantly yeah. taking notes, constantly writing things down. You know, hi- is it hypographia or whatever it's called? Um, so I find that I have this whole list of stuff, but I think I just need to be more brutal and ruthless with it. Yeah. Like when a friend tells me, oh, you should read this article, I always feel obliged, you know, but <sighs> – I, you know, you can't, there's so much information. We're so overwhelmed. You've really right. got to pick and choose. So maybe, yeah. I, maybe I, that's I, it. I, I think I do a better job than many. Like I, I do respond to everybody that emails me, although I can be slow. And I think you're right. Like this is hard for me too. Like I like to respond to people quickly. I like to, you know, give that touch. Um, uh, but if we want to get our big dreams accomplished, we've got to be okay with saying no or just not now. Like, okay, can't promise when I'll read that article though and kind of put it off to the side. I love that you batched today. So you, how many interviews are you doing today? I think I've got five today. Well, all back to back. Uh, usually there's a 15 to 30 minute break, but, uh, That's hardcore. pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I love the concept of batching. Uh, I did a, I did a, a dedicated podcast to that, like a monologue, uh, or solo cast, as you said, um, where, cause I do that for the podcast. So if I do like six interviews, I will batch uh-huh. record, not, I will batch record the interviews. Normally I won't do more than three. Cause I find that destroys me in the afternoon any more than that and i'm I'm crap interviewer um but what i tend to do is i'll batch all of the intros as well so i will do the intros the next day and it's amazing how much you can get done when you really batch tasks that are very similar it's just awesome so yeah Yeah, and that's that that is like a big discovery and I don't know why, because you think if it takes you an hour to do an interview, it takes an hour to do an interview. But there's something about the batching that keeps you in that zone. And I, I don't know how it works, but it's really, really powerful. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about goal setting quickly. Um, how do you – I've always had issues and, and challenges with goal setting. So how do you think about goal setting and what are your you know, recommendations when people ask you about this? Yeah, I um... – I, I have like a love hate, uh, um, relationship with the concept of goal setting. And I think there's four big keys for success, traditionally defined success, and goal setting is one of them. And my, you know, teens and twenties and maybe even into my thirties, I was extremely goal driven. And I have a book. That's 90% done on how to set goals. Mm. And in that, in that book, in the beginning, I, I, and I haven't even opened this manuscript in a few years now. I think I say something like, if there is magic on earth, it's goal setting. Because I saw it myself. Like I went from, you know, a fair, pretty much a dead broke, <laughs> uh, young guy to setting goals. And it was almost like magic. Whatever goal I set, I would get really close to no bigger but also no smaller. And looking back, I would say, you know, why did I make, why did my first company, it took me five years to get to a million dollars. I would say, because my goal was too small, that was my goal. And then what would have happened if my, if I had been able to believe and set a goal for 5 million or 10 million or whatever. Now, having said all of that about the power of goal setting to lose weight, to make money, to whatever, I also now, now I'm 50 years old now. In the last 10 years, I've come to feel that it's like a double edged sword that can hurt you as much as it can help you. Because I think that what I found in my own life is, um, 
the more goals you have, the more you're spreading out the focus. So for a goal to work, one goal is great, maybe two, something like that. And yet I was so focused on my one goal, which was a monetary goal. I sacrificed my health. I sacrificed my marriage, for example. Um, and to be honest, for the last 10 years, I sold my last company 10 years ago and my marriage split up and I became a single dad of three kids. I've got three teenagers who are great. Thank God. Um, but I made a decision at that point. My number one goal was going to be an amazing dad. Like I, I needed to be the best dad ever for my three kids. And that meant I could not build a very big author, speaker, or new business, you know, at that time. I mean, I did fine, but it wasn't, it, it was tiny compared to what it could have been. So I guess this, what I'm saying is, you know, yeah, like goal setting made me millions of dollars by the time I was 30 years old and more by the time I was 40. And goal setting contributed to my marriage blowing up at age 40, right? To me, you know, uh, you know, being really unhealthy mentally and physically for a decade or more. So I think goal setting is powerful and you need to be careful. At the very least, set goals, but have at least two or three that are a little bit more balanced. And my friends who I have a lot of friends who are doing really well. And rather than traditional like smart goals, what they're doing is sort of just setting uh, intentions. And I, um, I'm back to setting goals in, a, in some areas of my life, longer term goals. But now every morning, like I'm a simple guy. So I just focus on my part of my morning routine. It's health, wealth, and relationships. And I think about like, what am I trying to accomplish for health, for wealth, for relationships? And then more like, what can I do today to achieve those things? And it might be simple. It's like, you know, it, instead of a specific smart goal around relationships, when I think of relationships, I think about, all right, I just want this incredible connection with my children. And then I go into tactics for the day. Oh, Amanda's off to college. Um, but I remember she's got this ballroom dance competition coming up as an activity. I will text her to ask her how it's going preparing. Um, I've got my son who's a basketball fanatic, and I know the Philadelphia 76ers are playing tonight. I'll ask him if he wants to sit and watch the game. Like, it, And it comes naturally. Like, it, I don't have to think this through. But every morning, I just remind myself, health, wealth, relationships – what am I trying to do and what can I do today to achieve it? And it's not really goal setting. It's more like setting intentions around these areas. So I know I just rambled, but like I, you know, goal setting is powerful, but also dangerous is how I struggle with it. Yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it. I've not um, thought about the downsides like that. Um, and I like the idea of intentions because uh, I feel like if you don't have goals of some kind or intentions, then you are a little bit aimless. So that also can be bad. Um, yeah. So I've also found that and uh, for me, like it's not like I haven't been able to achieve things. I've, I've been successful in certain domains, um, without really setting goals and being like, right, my goal is X by this month and I'm going right. to do this action each day. Like I've just, it's strange. Like I've never, I don't think I, I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever really achieved a goal that I've actually set in stone by a certain time. Yeah. You know, like I've achieved, which is the classic wisdom. They say, "Oh, if it's not time bound, it's not a goal. That's a wish yeah. or something, right?" Yeah, yeah. But I have achieved goals um, in a different. I don't know, like without ever setting. Like I had intentions. I guess is what I'm saying. Like I always wanted to be my own boss, so that was yeah. like a value and an intention, and it was, you know, that was that that was it. And then obviously I, I strive to do that each day, and and, and now I'm doing it. Uh, but it wasn't. I never. I never achieved the exact figure financially at the, to do that, nor did I achieve it by a certain date. It just kind of happened. <laughs> well, and, and Lawrence, I think the key here is, you know, it's that classic, uh, I'm looking up at a copy of it, the, the old book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, you know, our thoughts yeah. become things. And, and I think so for the average person who's just waking up and going through life aimlessly and watching reality TV and Instagram or Snapchat or whatever, to have a goal that you, you know, you write it so it's very specific and you stick it on your mirror or you say it three times a day, you know, that's kind of a, a tool to help direct your thoughts. Your thoughts become things. 
Other times, you know, there are, you know, we were just driven from something else. You know, you think about being your own boss. You think about having a low body fat or something. You don't really need, oh, I'm going to have 8% body fat in nine months. It's like, I care about health. I love health. I want to be fit. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. It's just, it's in your thoughts. And, and I, (laughs) you'll have to give me some private coaching later because, I mean, this is, whether it's intense or goal setting, this is my own struggle. You know, so now that I did a startup business again this year, I'm thinking all the time about the business. And, you know, I've, I've put on several percent of fat that I didn't have a year ago when I didn't have a business. And I was more naturally thinking about both what I'm eating and then what I'm, what I'm doing, you know, fitness wise. So it's, it's just how can, what, what is it that we think about is what's going to, manifest really it almost takes care of the goals for you right right i, I think that. that's right yeah cool and that's really interesting and uh, now i've definitely got some uh, some suggestions for you on the exercise side which i i wrote down to talk to you about anyway because i thought they'd be interesting to you and we'll, good we'll, we'll come on to that um <laughs> okay so this you mentioned about inbox zero and this is an interesting thing to me um why is it you aim for, i know i know you have this um three two one zero approach where you check email three times a day for 21 minutes each time and then you try and get to inbox zero which is quite fascinating and inbox zero to me whilst it's satisfying to achieve that it is kind of arbitrary so why is it you do that (laughs) um so i think for me uh for me inbox zero um it's more of the goal you know i might be 50 50 on which days i hit it but to me it's it's uh There's no reason why I can't hit it if I'm working right. And inbox zero to me just means that everything has been taken care of, you know, whether it's phone calls, emails, the to do's, everything's being taken care of. So, you know, whether you get to inbox zero every hour, once a day, once a week, once a month, I think it's more the point is you don't want things sitting in your inbox for very long because it's like a second to do list, you know, our when would you get to it? If it's important, are you going to lose it? Um, th- that's all it is to me. It's like, I just know the inbox isn't a great place to store things. So either let me store, let me put it on the count. Cal- let me do it. Let me put it on the calendar. Let me delete it, archive it. Uh, I forward a lot of them to Evernote. You know, I don't use Evernote very much, but I forward all kinds of things into Evernote, knowing that they'll be there if I need them again. But it's just I don't find the inbox a very, um, you know, effective place to store things. Yeah, I get you. So it's like um, and it also it reduces your stress, right? And your kind of cognitive load because you're thinking about it. Right. So there is I see the value in that. Yeah. And unfortunately, I, I'm, I am guilty like right now. And this is uh, it's just because I forgot. Normally, I shut it down on the podcast, but it's interesting that we're talking about it. When you can see your list, you know, most people have if they're at a, if they're at their office, the email window is open or something and you kind of see all that. And that's cognitive load. You know, that's distracting. And, and uh, the other, you know, a horrible thing is, you know, people who get pings every time an email comes in, you know, that's interrupting and all that stuff. So, it should be out of sight, out of mind. And if it's open, the less that's in it, I think the better. Yeah, I like your tip about turning off all notifications oh. on everything, which is exactly what I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I, can't, I wouldn't get anything done otherwise. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah. So you've talked about, obviously, you're a big fan of calendaring stuff. Um, you know, I, I rely on my iCal a lot. Um, and I think a lot of people do. You mentioned before that, look, if you don't get stuff done on that day that's calendared, knock it on to the next day and review it the next day. Um, That's fine. And I do that. But I find I do that a lot. Now, like, you know, again, it perhaps doesn't matter so much if you're getting your most important thing done. Um, But yeah, I don't know. Like, I just, I find myself, like, if I've got two or three things in the afternoon, they're going to get knocked to the next day. And then sometimes they may never happen or take a long time to happen so do you think that's a problem or do you think that's just part of the process and well yeah i don't i don't think it's a problem and and i um i I go in in patterns so for the last few weeks things have been so crazy and i've had some unexpected things come up in life as as it happens that i'm sliding things around like crazy there are other times when not not so much 
I think, again, as entrepreneurs, as creative people, we're optimists. It's like, oh, I'm going to get that thing done. It's only going to take 30 minutes, and then it's 45 minutes, but then it just pushed the next thing. So, you know, I I don't um, take my own medicine. What I tell people when they try to, uh, you know, the phrase I use is, you know, schedule, uh, schedule, don't list. Don't add something to a list. Actually schedule it. So if you want to be a schedule, don't list kind of person, ease into it. So and I like the way you started. If you can start by just scheduling your MIT time, even if it's for 30 minutes, that's a win. When you're comfortable with doing that, try scheduling your mornings. When you're comfortable with that, add it to the afternoons. But everybody should really, when you schedule your whole day, there's no daylight, you're still scheduling buffer time or think time or recharging time. And so, you know, if you have three 30 minute time slots, not lunch, not email, probably, but just buffer, then it's less likely you're going to slide things around because now you've got kind of 90 minutes built into your day for things to run long, or you just slide it from the morning to the afternoon. Um, And I think that that's normal and good. Uh, God forbid you actually get to that time slot, it says buffer, and you're like, oh my gosh, what should I do? Well, rest, recover, think strategically, right? Start early on the next task. Um, But, you know, I think sliding's fine. Like, Going to the calendar doesn't guarantee that 100% of your stuff gets done and on the day you planned. It just increases the odds up from the 40% on your to-do list, and it reduces stress a little bit, I think. Do you Makes t- it easier to say no, too. Sorry to cut you off, Lawrence. Like, you know, you say, hey, you want to have a cup of coffee this afternoon? And, you know, if I'm living off a to-do list, I look at my calendar. Oh, yeah, I got no phone calls or meetings. Sure, let's have a cup of coffee. Let's have some tea. And then... If I've got all those slots booked up, I'll be like, oh, can't do it today, but three weeks from now, there's an open slot. So that makes it a little easier to say no. Yeah, I love that. Um, I It's quite funny. You made me remember, I have a, a, a friend of mine who I uh, work out of a co-working space sometimes where I live in Galway in Ireland. And, you know, we always have so much to talk about because we're both kind of ambitious and we're... We, you know, watching the latest, whatever it is, social media or business trend or fad or whatever. So we want to catch up, but we know that it's going to bleed into our most important time if we just yeah. start chatting. So, yeah. so I said to him, I said, look, stop, to- stop talking now. I'm going to, because we're, we're in like the co-working space. Like we're going to stop talking now. I've got stuff to do. You've got stuff to do. I'll tell you what, I'm going to send you free dates and we're yeah. going to, we're going to, we're going to go for lunch or we're going to go out for a drink in the evening right. one day and then we're going to have this type of chat because it's important we have it social is really right. important but otherwise both of us is not going to get anything done that's right but that's most right. people will just let that go take you know carry them away and totally eat into the most productive time and yeah. uh, i think it's more strategic to be like no stop i've got stuff to do and like right. you say your calendar can help you determine that and even up. if that's even if that's going for drinks every night, that's fine. But you know, okay, I'm going for drinks in four hours, and now's my time to work instead. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, and earn it, right? Right, earn it, right. <laughs> um, cool. What about um, do you use things like? I mean, you mentioned you don't do uh, just a minute meetings. You know, do you have a minute? You don't do that. You, you'll always schedule stuff in advance and and uh, prioritize. And you won't answer unrecognized numbers, which I don't do either. Um, what else do you have on your not to do list from a productivity point of view, if anything? Yeah, well, and, and to clarify, like you know, I, um, I will do the got a minute meetings, but again, they're scheduled, so it's going to be. Hey, you know, in the afternoon during these times or on a Friday afternoon, it's like office hours, you know, come see me in the office hours. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a good question. I'm trying to think of, I mean, every year when people, now's the time of year to be thinking about it. As everyone's thinking about their New Year's resolutions, I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start writing that book I always want to write. You know, I'm going to do this thing. I try to think about what else can I not do and what can I stop? What can I stop? And so um, I'm trying to think of some of the things. I mean, for uh, – I mean, there's simple ones. You know, for the longest time, my business is so small that it doesn't take much time for me to do the books, like to pay the bills and to send the invoices and all that. But I realized, once again, do I enjoy it? No. Is it one of my super skills, my super strengths? No. Then, you know, why don't I pay someone – 
fifty dollars an hour to do it when I make more than that. I can make get more back from that. And so I stopped doing that, even though it was fairly easy, it wasn't that much. I you know, I just stopped. And I guess I'm always looking for things of that nature. But I don't, you know, I don't know off the top of my head. You named the obvious ones, you know, not answering the phone, um, not doing the the stop the stop by meetings. You know, I like it's hard for even my own team members to get a hold of me um, without it being scheduled. Like Mondays are for meetings in my mind. Mondays are for meetings. So I will do a one on one Skype uh, video meeting. We're all remote on Mondays. But again, batching, <laughs> I stack those up. And then if someone on like a Wednesday said, hey, can we jump on a Skype and talk about something? My first reaction is, can it wait till Monday? <laughs> and it sounds harsh, but um, it's so, – and sometimes if they say no, I'm like, okay, fine, then let's hop on. But if we just did our Monday and we have this ping instant messaging back and forth and email if we need to, you know, why do we need to jump on, on Skype? Because I don't find live is very efficient. Hmm. Yeah. And I think it's really important to highlight at this point that whilst, you know, Kevin and I are talking about how to create the most well-oiled routine, (laughs) yeah, life does happen. You know, for example, and I I meant to say this to you, um, I meant to apologize for rescheduling this because I had to reschedule this interview because I had a family emergency come up. Mm. I mean, I had to travel across the country at short notice. And, you know, these things happen. And uh, obviously, that's an extreme example. But, you know, something happens like, I don't know, you just feel tired or you know, fill in the blank and you just right. have to be flexible and adapt, don't you? And I oh, just think you're... some people get too stressed trying to follow a rigid system, you know? Yeah. And I think that's it. And that's where guys like you and I, we get attacked like, oh, you're all boxed in and doesn't leave any room. You know, if my computer crashes, I'm not going to get all my things done that I thought today. If, if, uh, you know, I get the flu, I wake up with the flu that day is gone. I mean, yeah. life happens, life happens. What are some of your favorite tools and apps for productivity at the moment you know i'm not a big um i'm not a big app guy i use gmail for my mail i use google calendar for my calendar i don't use any to-do list apps um i like my uh my notebook like a paper i'm a paper and pen kind of guy and then i've got evernote but what i'll do is evernote i use for um website bookmarks or like the capturing simplified articles uh, into Evernote. I forward emails into Evernote, receipts or something sometimes. But um, I'm trying to think uh, like productivity wise, I mean, that's kind of it. I mean, for what I do for a living, I'm on all the social media apps and, you know, I try to be not, not enough. Like I will also use those to distract myself, which is not good to procrastinate sometimes. Um but that's that's it. I mean, there's no other tools I'm really using. We use Basecamp internally for project management and uh, messaging, but that's about it. That's very comforting to hear. Because, um, <laughs> well, I, you get. I'm sure you get this all the time, right? People think if I just had the right app or if I switch from this to-do app to this other to-do app, my life will be perfect. And it just doesn't work that way. I find that, you know, there are some there are some interesting apps out there and there are some interesting automation tools. I don't know if you've heard of Hazel, which is a no. tool. Hazel's like a workflow tool for the Mac. I, I don't think it's for PC. Uh, there might be one. But basically, it will just automate stuff. So, for example, it will set rules. Think about, like, mm-hmm. rules in email. So if you download a file... If that file is say over this, this, um, size, then it gets transferred to this folder. Um, so that's kind of cool. However, I think one can get so obsessed with efficiency, right? And stuff yeah. like that. And there's tons of apps out there for efficiency that you forget about being effective. And it's this whole effective versus efficiency thing. Um, so it just seems interesting to me that, you know, Tim is the same, you know, Tim Ferris has used a very basic set of apps. There's no secret apps that he's using, from what I understand. Right, um, right. It would seem that the habits are way more important than any of these tools. The principles, I should say, are more important than these tools. You know? Well, I, I think the principles, the habits, and right, our, our own psychology. And, and I'm not against, you know, to each their own. So uh, as you were describing Hazel, it made me think of that other one, you know, if, then, the, if yeah. then, that, if or whatever. That. I can't, yeah, yeah. If yeah. this, then that. Yeah. And I know there's remarkable recipes that can do all these things that can make us efficient. And um, 
you know, I've played with a little of a few of them, like the, the, the boomerang email that will send an oh, email out. I love that. Like you, yeah. So you like that? Like I, you know, I've tried them out, but I'm such a simple guy. It's like, you know, I'm going to, why am I boomeranging? I'm going to respond to them or I'm going to calendar. I'm just going to delete the thing <laughs> and wait for them to ask me again. So, um, I think these tools are amazing. I love technology. Like I really, um, I like my Amazon echo, you know, I like little things that kind of help me to listen to the news while I make them breakfast and stuff like that. So I'm not anti-tech, but I'm a simple guy and I haven't really found the need for those things. Yeah. I agree. There are some really good tools. I mean, I use Boomerang and, uh, there's a few others that are really useful. Um, but yeah, I just think one can get too obsessed with looking for that as their Archimedes lever rather than the principles. Right. Um, right. Which is, which is the, I think the point we're both sort of trying to make. Um, are you, I just wondered, you use Google Calendar. Did you, do you uh, yeah. use that for, uh, over iCal for a specific reason? Um, I just noticed that I think there's some, some, uh, improved features in Google Cal over iCal, but just curious. You know, I, uh, again, no, no specific thing came to mind. Now, years ago, I think with the first version of Google Calendar, you know, on the, they didn't really have an app. They didn't really have a, a good tool. And, um, so I, I was using, you know, iCal and stuff and it was fine, but it wasn't, wasn't integrating right. And as Google Calendar has gotten better, you know, I've just stuck to that app and now I'm just kind of seamless with, with Google, but I can't, I couldn't describe to you like which one does this thing better than the other or all that stuff. Again, to your point, it's not really that important, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I wanted to, I want to make sure I get this in. Um, talked about exercise. So th this, if this podcast is obviously all about high intensity strength training right. or a big part of it is, which, um, it was once I discovered this way of exercising, it was a complete game changer for me. Uh, it led to me interviewing Dr. Doug McGuff, who was the author of Body by Science and so on and so forth. Um, are you, I, I know you do do resistance training. What, yeah. are you familiar with high intensity training? It's a form of yeah. resistance training. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm familiar with your story. I mean, I, and okay. it's, <laughs> I, I feel like I got to ask you, like, does it, did it really happen? Does it really work like that? Which, of course, you're not on your pipeline. Like, oh, no, I just made all that stuff up. <laughs> you know, so I, I already know your answer, but you have such a remarkable story. And I think that, you know, so for my own real quick um, background on it, I have, uh, I find that my fitness is one of my greatest failures. Now, you know, I'm 50 years old. I'm, I'm six feet tall. I weigh 172. So it's not like I have an obesity problem or anything, but very low muscle tone, you know, uh, weight, uh, my 172 pounds is way more fat than, than it should be. And this is an area I continue to struggle with. And I have had, like in-person coaches that I've paid a lot of money to. I've had remote coaches that I've paid. None, nothing has stuck with me. And I know it's all my own, own psychology. I've tried different programs, different diets, blah, blah, blah. The only thing that has stuck the longest, which means it didn't stick, is um, – a program called Body for Life. I'm not sure if you're familiar. I don't know. No. So, so BFL, it's a, it's a classic resistance training cardio, resistance cardio, like, you know, alternating. And, um, the, the cardio is, is high impact and, you know, uh, intensity, high intensity training for the cardio short session. The, you know, the resistance is fair, fairly short, but not a, not a hit session. And their meal plan is like, it's, it's a balance. So it's, you know, carb, veggies, protein, roughly all the size of the palm of your hand, six meals a day. And then, of course, you know, a lot of us will do shakes or, pro you know, protein instead of meals. That has worked for me better than anything, but that's not saying much. And where I've made my life even more miserable, Lawrence, is that, you know, I've become a, a, a vegetarian. So in the last a couple of years, so it's harder for me to get the protein that I used to get when I would eat chicken breasts three times a day <laughs> was that was that an ethical decision or what made you change um a uh, little bit ethical ethical health i mean kind of all all the above i mean i just start started eating less and less meat and as i you know did more research and a little bit how how i felt um and it's pretty good now and i'll sometimes sneak some fish in and stuff um pea protein is fine you know i could do protein drinks and all that but um i'm fascinated about your story because even you know if i'm doing uh hit training my hit cardio is three or four times a day and 
again, like I'm not, it's hard for me to stick to a program mm-hmm. and I'm really not seeing results. Yeah, I'm I'm very conscious of time, but I will just make one recommendation because Please. I don't want to overwhelm you with information. All right. Buy and read Body by Science. It will change the way you think I, about exercise. I wrote it down when you mentioned it in the uh <laughs> it, right right in the beginning, so I'll I'll get that right away. Because high intensity training is highly ambiguous, so there are people that have taken that concept and they're marketing it as something ah. totally random whereas Okay. The high intensity training that I talk about on my show is the, is the strength training, uh, promoted by and kind of invented by Arthur Jones, um, who's American. I don't know if you're familiar with that name. Um, big exercise entrepreneur in the kind of seventies and eighties. Um, and it's essentially resistance training performed typically big movements like a leg press, a chest press Mm -hmm. to one set to failure once or twice a week, you know, and so, you know, most, most people, in this space are working out for no longer than half an hour a week and they're getting optimal gains in terms of muscle mass and strength um because exercise for fat loss isn't really that effective that's all diet as you probably know Um, i learned the hard way (laughs) yeah but i'll I'll just i won't elaborate any more than that but because i'm just conscious of your time um but by yeah read body by science and if you've got any questions i'm happy to help you and you're how long have you been working out like this now uh, I've been working out like this for probably about um, six years, six wow. or seven years. And you're still once or twice a week doing yeah, your – Yeah, like um, uh, I do twice a week at the moment, but only because I love it. I mean I'm a bit of an outlier. I love like you know this kind of stuff. But for a long time – and you won't believe this. For a long time, I was working out once a week, and my total workout time was six minutes. Yeah, that's and that, incredible. And that's because I couldn't cope with any more than that because my muscles were completely fatigued. Um, and, you know, I was 10% body fat. I'm still probably around – right now, I'm probably about 8%. Um, and my diet is just, well, you won't like my diet. It's mostly it's paleo, right? It's pretty paleo. Yeah. yeah it, paleo. It's mostly steak. Um, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's great food that I enjoy. Um, and yeah, I, I just think that, you know, for certainly for people like you and I, proper productivity nerds, I think this is the exercise regime that we've all been looking for. Um, uh, because it's super effective and efficient and it addresses total health. Um, so yeah. Read re- by I, science. You won't be. I'm going to get it right away because, again, both from a productivity standpoint and because I have failed to stick with other other methods, this is great. No worries. Um, yeah, and if you've got any questions, just let me know. I'm happy to help. Okay. Um, where's, what's the uh, best way for people to find out more about you, Kevin? Yeah, the. I mean, I, I read and answer every email. So if anybody just wants to, to connect, I'm Kevin at leadx.org, L-E-A-D-X.org. Um, at leadx.org, we have a free training video every single day, productivity, leadership, management, all kinds of topics. And I'm on all the social media channels, you know, Twitter, Snapchat even. Um, usually it's just uh, Kevin Author or Kevin Cruz. They can find me there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Um, yeah, fun talk. Fun talk. It is. I've, le- I've learned a lot, actually. Um, and to everyone listening, to find the show notes, links, and resources for this episode and all episodes, please go to corporatewarrior.org. And until next time, guys, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Before you head off, head on over to corpwarrior.com, that's C-O-R-P warrior.com, to get your free high-intensity training Google progress chart and ebook with six interview transcripts with some of my top guests, including Dr. Doug McGuff, Drew Bay, and Bill De Simone on how to optimize muscle gain, fat loss, and overall health in an efficient, effective, and sustainable way. These transcripts are deliberately not verbatim. Instead, they've been transcribed in an easy read format to make it more enjoyable and easier for you to quickly pick out what you need and start getting results. To get your ebook, head on over to corpwarrior.com, enter your email address, then check your email for an email from me with a confirmation link. Once you click the link, you will be instantly redirected to a PDF version of the transcripts. This podcast is brought to you by HitUni.com. HitUni.com are a provider of amazing online courses for high-intensity training qualifications. HitUni comes highly recommended by the best in the field, including Body by Science co-author Dr. Doug McGuff, Discover Strength CEO Luke Carlson, and trainer and founder of Bay.com, Drew Bay. It was founded by my friend, author, and longtime personal trainer, Simon Shawcross, who's also been a guest on the podcast. Simon has 15 years' experience training clients and is supervisor of a 15 
15,000 high intensity training workouts. Using knowledge from experts like Skylar Tanner, Dr. James Steele, Dr. Ellington Darden, Hit Uni is a goldmine for learning everything to do with high intensity training. The courses are delivered online through the website where you can learn via a variety of multimedia materials at your own pace. There's online support and a discussion forum where you can share ideas and ask for help. To learn more about high intensity training and improve my own results, I started their personal trainer course. The content is amazing, the courses are really easy to follow, and each section is organized into bite sized chunks that give you a real sense of achievement after you complete each one. I should also mention that there is a DIY course, so this is the course for you if you're not necessarily a personal trainer but you want to learn more about high intensity training and how to implement it for maximum benefit in your own exercise regime. To get your exclusive Corporate Warrior 10% discount, discount on any course you purchase, simply head on over to hituni.com, that's H-I-T-U-N-I, U-N-I, dot com, and enter the coupon code CW10, that's CW and the number 10. So again, head on over to hituni.com, pick your course, and enter the coupon code CW10 for 10% discount. Thank you for your support.